who should lead the RNC and whether it should be Rana for a fourth term or go a different direction with Harmeet Dillon. What are your thoughts on this? Well, we've had three substandard election cycles in a row, 18, 20, and 22. And I would say of all three of those, 22 was probably the worst given the, the political environment of a very unpopular president and Biden. Huge majorities of the people think the country's going in the wrong direction. That is an environment that's tailor made to make big gains in the House and the Senate and state house, state houses all across the country. And yet that didn't happen. And in fact, we even lost ground in the U.S. Senate. And so, you know, I think we need a change. I think we need to get some new blood in the RNC. I like what Harmeet Dillon has said about getting the RNC out of D.C. Why would you want to have your head headquarters in the most Democrat city in America. It's more Democrat than San Francisco is. Is it? How about Chicago, LA, New York, since that's all these toss up where you want at that point. Ron DeSantis, there it is, finally getting his, uh, his, I guess, choice for the RNC head tossed in there. As everyone's battling over this, as Ron McDaniels finds herself in some trouble. By the way, as he's talking about the issues they had in the midterms, all that has to do with the RNC. I'm not saying it has nothing to do with it, but it seems like he's shedding a bunch of responsibility from other folks within the party as the reasons why they had their issues in the midterms. Either way it goes, this battle has now gotten to Ron DeSantis. And there's a reason it's gotten to Ron DeSantis. First, let's see some of the issues that Ronald McDonald continues to go through as they come for her. MSNBC talked about it, let's watch. Ronna McDaniel's tenure as GOP party chair gets a challenge from the far right. McDaniel, who was handpicked by then President Donald Trump for the role, is leading the RNC's three day winter meeting in Southern California. And a key item on tomorrow's agenda a vote to pick the party's next leader. McDaniel's biggest competition appears to be from Harmy Dillon, an RNC member who leads the Republican National Lawyers Association and once represented Mr. Trump. Also pushing for that role, the My Pillow founder, Mike Lindell. Yep. <laughs> It's like all the players in there, Harmeet Dillon, very serious candidate. And then there's the My Pillow Head guy, Mike Lindell. I guess he's jumping in it too. So Harmeet Dillon apparently appears to be, I guess, the candidate that's getting the support of the Ron DeSantis of the world, but also Carrie Lake, which we'll also talk about later in the show. These types of players, these types of names, think about who they're supporting and probably why. Here's the Carrie Lake part. Let's watch. By grassroots, I mean the mama bears and papa bears. In Arizona, we have a movement of moms and dads who are fed up with the way that uh, the country is going. They're fed up with Democrat policies that are driving our country into the ground. And we need somebody like for me. We need to change. And we, we thank Rana for her service and her time. America needs a change right now. We need a fighter who's willing to stand up. I know for a fact that this amazing woman could make way more money doing what she does, which is amazing legal work. She's stepping into the fray at this critical moment in, in American history. Listen to the things that first Ron DeSantis said off the top and then Carrie Lake there saying about Harmeet Dillon there. These are things you could apply to any Republican that's gonna run the RNC. Cuz that's just basically the idea. We need to go a different direction because the Democrat party is destroying this country and we need to change it and change it and change it. What is it that the previous one was doing that was so wrong? They haven't said it yet because they're all gonna do the same damn thing. There's one more player though as we saw. We can see endorsements flying for Harmeet Dillon. Where's the endorsement flying from Mike Pillowhead? It's coming from Mike Pillowhead, watch. So Mike Lindell, how do you, why would your victory at the RNC be anything but a total disaster then, sir? No, it'd be the biggest uniting of the RNC ever. We are, what's not united, you brought it up and, her, and uh, Ronna never answered the question. You brought up your Charlie Kirks and everyone else out there that has a problem with the current leadership at the RNC. Steve, these are all the grassroots, these are the people of this country. The people, if you did a poll, Ron is getting 1%. Not even some of them in the negative, or I mean less than 1%. I will unite this party yeah. like never before because you're starting from the bottom up. And you know what? You guys at the top, you better come on board. Or you know what? We're gonna, you're outnumbered. This is it. You know, we have to come together. But it's. 
I would love to see that happen. I got to be honest. So yeah, as we've got the players in place, we have the endorsements flying. There's, I want to point out to you guys why I think this is a bit of a of a a preview to who they're trying to nominate when it comes to their presidential nominations come 24. But first, just this breakdown. Where do you see this going? Yeah, you know, Mike Lindell, the great unifier. He started from the bottom and now he is wherever he currently is. Right. I don't know. Yeah, but this is sort of another layer of what's going on with Trump and DeSantis, right? And I don't know if I might be um, talking about I'm what you're about you to are. be talking about, but this feels kind of like a proxy war to me, right? You know, Ronna McDaniel was handpicked by Trump and she lost a lot of support amongst Republicans since the 2022 midterms. Even before that, she was losing support. So something that could, that's something that could also be said about Trump considering how many of his endorsed candidates actually lost their races across the country in 2022. So I think we're starting to see the Republican Party shift away from Trump in that whole Trumpian era. And I don't necessarily think that that's a good thing. DeSantis is now and has always been much more frightening and threatening than Trump is to this country. His unofficial endorsement of Harmeet Dillon has already shaken things up for the chair race. So it's hard to deny that his growing influence, his influence is growing over the party and we shouldn't really ignore it. Uh, I'm glad you talked about the proxy war. I called it a cold war because yes, as you can see where these people have fallen in place. Ron DeSantis, Harmeet Dillon, who is still supporting Ronna McDaniel? Well, it's Donald Ethan Trump. He's still pushing for her. He still wants her back because she was the one that was part of them in the RNC paying his legal bills as he's going through all the investigations and such until finally, you know, he detached too far. She was always the one that had his back. But what about the rest of the RNC? Let's go to graphic one here. Uh, the 168 members of the RNC are gathering in Southern California to select their own leader on Friday, their own leader. In interviews this week with 59 of them, which is more than one third of the committee's membership, found few eager to crown Mr. Trump as their nominee for a third time. Yeah, he's losing it there. The New York Times called, emailed, or texted all 168 RNC members, and just four out of 168 offered an unabashed endorsement of Trump's 2024 campaign. 20 said that the former president should not be the party's nominee. And an additional 35 said they'd like to see a big primary field or decline to state their position on Trump. So that's the one thing about it. One more piece here, in interviews, some RNC members estimated that between 120 and 140 of them preferred someone besides Trump to be their party's presidential nominee. That's where it is and I think people are seeing that, they're reading it and, and they're, they don't wanna back a loser, but they also don't want to say Trump is a loser. We're not going to back him. There's still this avoidance factor, and it's like maybe we'll mention someone else on the side, so we'll have to directly say we don't want Donald Trump to be our nominee. Yo, when it starts falling into place, everyone else that's surrounding and whoever else that's supporting certain folks will be collateral damage. Ronald McDaniel apparently appears to be that first one on the chopping blocks. 